When the Human Genome Project was started in 1988, the process of sequencing was used routinely. And that process of sequencing was very time-consuming and very difficult. But in 1988, four different groups working on the sequencing, sequencing they proposed a different method of the sequencing. And that method was known as the sequencing by hybridization. In the sequencing by hybridization, a small DNA chip, or, uh, DNA array, also known as DNA chip, was developed. And in that chip, small DNA fragments known as the probes, they were attached to that DNA chip. And the fragments of DNA that needs to be sequenced, they were hybridized with those probes. So those small probes that have the size of 8 to 32 nucleotides, they were used to identify the fragments that needs to be sequenced. And the process is was very simple that the fragments that needs to be sequenced, they were hybridized with that small probes. And after hybridization, there was a small uh, weak interaction between the probes and the DNA fragments. It means that probes were used to identify the DNA fragments that correspond to the sequence of the probes. For example, we can see here that a probe that has a sequence of A, C, C, G, T, G, G, A. If we assume that this is the probe and this probe is attached with the DNA chip. So when the DNA fragment that needs to be sequenced is hybridized with this probe, they will form a interaction with this probe. Because this is a complementary with that probe and it will form the interaction and will there will be a weak interaction between the probe and the fragment that needs to be sequenced. So by 1988, nobody knows that this sequencing by hybridization will produce a very good results. Because there were so many problems in producing the DNA chips because the size of the probe was very small, 8 to 32 nucleotides, and they have to be produced in a very large number. So each gene has to, some, uh, some part has to be complementary to that probe. And second was the combinatorial effect that needs to be performed after the hybridization was performed. So when the first paper was published regarding the sequencing by hybridization, the journal Science has commented on this technique and it has said that one laborious technique was replaced by the another laborious technique. It means that this is the time-consuming technique and the technique that it has replaced was also time-consuming. So there is no difference between these uh, two techniques as far as the time is concerned. So another technique was put forward by the scientist named as the Steve Fodder in 1991. And that technique was known as the light-directed polymer synthesis. So in this technique also the small probes were generated and they were uh, just like the technique that are used in the computer science to generate the small chips for the computer. So we can see in the figure that this is the small chip DNA array. And in this DNA array or DNA chip, a large number of small probes, they were attached with this chip. And the fragments of DNA that needs to be sequenced, they were hybridized. And then it was proceeded further. So if we use this technique and building an array with the 4 raised to power L probes, that have the length of L 
then it just required 4 into L separate reactions rather than the presumed 4 L reactions. With this method, there is a company in the California known as the FE Matrix and it has built the first 60 bore KB, 64 KB DNA array in 1994. So this is the diagram of the array chip that was first developed by that FE Matrix company. So by today we uh, have already different companies have built more than 10 megabase or larger arrays that are being used in routine and the use of these DNA arrays has become one of the most widespread new biotechnologies. So this sequencing by hybridization relies on the hybridization of the target fragments that we have already discussed against a very large array of short probes. In this manner probes can be used to test the unknown target DNA to determine its L-MERS composition. And we know that the L-MERS composition of the string is simply the set of all L-MERS present in that string. And uh, we have already seen the example of this L-MERS before. And we know that the universal DNA array contains the all four raised to the power L probes of length L and is applied as is shown in here. So we can see here that the probes, we can attach all possible probes of length L and here the length of L is L is equal to 8. To a flat surface, as we have seen the flat surface of the DNA chip, each probe at a distance and known location. So we also know the location of the probe in the error chip. So this set of probe is called the DNA array we have seen in the previous slide. Then we have to apply a solution containing fluorescent labeled DNA fragments to the array. So we have to make some of the modifications in the DNA fragment and we have to add some of the fluorescently labeled dyes to the DNA fragments so that we can detect the presence of the binding of the DNA with the probes. Then the DNA fragment hybridized with those probes that are complementary to substrings of length L of the fragment. Then by using the spectrophotometric detector, because we are using the fluorescently labeled dye, so we can detect it through a spectrophotometer detector. That determines which probe hybridized to the DNA fragment to obtain the Elmer composition of the target DNA fragment. And lastly, we have seen that after performing the experiment, we have to apply the computational algorithms that describe to reconstruct the sequence of the DNA fragment from the Elmer compositions. So here we can see very easily that if we have the DNA target, this DA, CCGT, TTT, and that is complementary to this sequence. And if we hybridize this sequence with different arrays of all four MERS, then we will come up that they will hybridize with either ATAG here or with TAGG, AGGC and so on. So we can see that by using all of four types of MERS, array MERS, then we can say that these types were hybridized with the target sequence and we can detect the sequence that which probe is binding with which DNA fragment and by this using this technique we can detect the sequence and the location of the probe that is binding with the DNA fragments.